Good day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another What If video. In today's video I will be discussing constructive dismissals and I will be referring to the recent Labour Court matter between ShopRite Checkers and Mr. Prince Nkosi. Let us start with the facts of the matter. The employee commenced employment in 2013 and started having challenges with his managers in 2016. Since 2016, the employee had been writing letters of complaints and lodging several grievances. Between 2016 and 2019, the employee was transferred to four different branches. He was issued several warnings and he referred two disputes to the CCMA. He was clearly not a happy employee. The final straw for him was in August 2019, when during preparations for a store visit, the manager did not allow him to knock off, notwithstanding his challenges with public transport. As a result of this, he was issued with three warnings, which warnings he challenged by lodging a grievance. The manager, in response to the grievances or grievance, lodged a complaint against Mr. Nkosi. A meeting was held between the employee and the manager, and both of them committed to work together amicably. But notwithstanding the agreement, the manager continued to allegedly mistreat the employee. On 30 September, Mr. Nkosi decided that this is the end of the road for him, and he tendered his resignation, and he worked out his notice. In his resignation letter, he set out the reasons for his resignation, which reasons then also formed the basis of his claim for constructive dismissal. He stated that he was frustrated by the fact that there was no promotion or career progression for him because he had been challenging his senior managers. He stated that he was not paid for overtime, that he worked. Uh, he stated that he had lodged various formal grievances challenging the manner in which he had been treated and some of these grievances were not dealt with. He stated that a certain Ms. Dunn told him that he would never be appointed as a branch manager as long as she was his boss. And he also had safety concerns as he had been constantly instructed to work late hours when there was no public transport available. He said that he was no longer prepared to risk his life for this. After his resignation, he referred the dispute to the CCMA and the CCMA found in his favor. The CCMA found that he was indeed constructively dismissed. ShopRite Checkers was not happy with this outcome and therefore they took the matter on review to the Labour Court. In the Labour Court, the court referred to three prerequisites to prove a case of constructive dismissal. Firstly, the employee must have terminated the contract of employment. Not the employer, the employee must have terminated the contract. In other words, resign. Secondly, the reason for termination or the resignation must be that continued employment has become intolerable for the employee. Quite straightforward. And then thirdly, the employer must have made continued employment intolerable, not the employee. We see in many cases that the employer has a role to play, has a part to play in, the, in creating an intolerable working environment. But it must be the employer, not the employee. The court held that to be successful with the claim for constructive dismissal, the conduct of the employer towards the employee and the cumulative impact thereof must be such that when you view it objectively, the employee could not reasonably be expected to cope with it. Resignation must accordingly have been a reasonable step for the employee to take in the circumstances to escape the intolerable working environment. The court referred to two recent cases, one labor court and one constitutional court case that dealt with constructive dismissal. The first case is Gold One Limited versus Madalani, and in this case the court held that intolerability is a high threshold far more than just a difficult, unpleasant, or stressful working environment or employment conditions. Or for that matter, the court held uh, an obnoxious, rude, and uncompromising superior who may treat an employee badly. Put otherwise, intolerability entails an unendurable or agonizing circumstances or circumstance marked by the conduct of the employer that must have been brought to the employee's tolerance or must have brought the employee's tolerance to a breaking point. The court also referred to a recent, very recent Constitutional Court decision, 2022 matter, where it was also held that the bar of intolerability is a very high one. The, ter the term intolerable implies a level of unbearability and must surely require more than the suggestion that the relationship is difficult. 
Now, applying these cases to Mr. Ngozi's case, the Labour Court considered the fact that he had withdrawn two of his disputes regarding the grievances and that he had resigned without doing any, anything about his final complaint to the regional manager. In regard to his complaints about not being promoted, there was no evidence presented that he actually applied for the positions. It was found by the court that the employer had tried to deal with the employee's complaints by transferring him to other stores and also had explored possibilities to keep him, even though there had been disciplinary issues with Mr. Nkosi. It was therefore held by the court that the employee had failed to prove that his employment conditions were intolerable. Furthermore, he failed to prove that the employer was responsible for the alleged intolerable conditions. The court accordingly held that the CCMA award must be set aside. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that then brings us to the end of this video. Should you have any questions in regard to this matter or in terms of constructive dismissals in general, please leave us a, com a comment or contact us directly. And also, should you have any suggestions in terms of topics you want us to cover in our next video or videos, let us know in the comments below. I'll see you in two weeks' time. Bye-bye.